Good morning and welcome to our May 17th Sunday worship here at St. John Lutheran Church. We begin in this Easter season. Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. Alleluia. We welcome you as we come to worship our Lord and Savior today. We thank um, Doreen Sutherland for playing the organ for us, Bruce Sutherland for uh, doing the congregational pieces there, our responsive readings, uh, for Heidi Cornell who's uh, help leading us in singing today, and Josiah Borkstead as he's helping us on the technical uh, side of things. What a beautiful day and a wonderful day to come and worship our Lord and Savior. So let us uh, begin then with the invocation. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we come to worship our Lord and Savior, we also come recognizing our need for a Savior and confess our sins. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We pause for a moment of silent reflection. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's join in singing our first song together, Great is Thy Faithfulness. in for sin and 
Continue now with our psalm response from Psalm 119. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly fixed in the heavens. Your faithfulness endures to all generations. You have established the earth and it stands fast. By your appointment they stand this day. For all things are your servants. If your law had not been my delight, I would have perished in my affliction. I will never forget your precepts. For by them you have given me life. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. We join in singing, this is the feast. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Let us pray. God, our Father, God, you protect Father, your children from all, children all that would harm our salvation. Harm our salvation. Give us the courage Give of faith courage and love towards you, love toward you, that we have boldness to live boldness. for you and confess your holy name before all. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first scripture reading for this morning comes from Acts chapter 17. 
While Paul was waiting for them at Athens, his spirit was provoked within him, and he saw that the city was full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and the devout persons, and in the marketplace every day with those who happened to be there. Some of the Epicureans and Stoic philosophers also conversed with him, and some said, What does this babbler wish to say? Others said, He seems to be a preacher of foreign divinities because he was preaching Jesus and the resurrection. And they took hold of him and brought him to the Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting, for you bring some strange things to our ears. We wish to know, therefore, what these things mean. Now all the Athenians and the foreigners who lived there would spend their time in nothing except telling or hearing something new. So Paul, standing in the midst of the Areopagus, said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in every way you are very religious. For as I passed along and observed the objects of your worship, I found also an altar with this inscription, to the unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needs anything, since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God in the hope that they might feel their way toward him and find him. Yet he's actually not far from each one of us, For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we are indeed his offspring. Being then God's offspring, we ought not to think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of man. The times of ignorance God overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all, raising him from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from 1 Peter chapter 3. Now who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. But in your hearts regard Christ, the Lord, as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience, so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring to God, putting to, being put to death in the flesh, but being made alive in the spirit, in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison, because they formerly did not obey. When God's patience waited in the days of Noah, While the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were brought safely through water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers, having been subjected to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading for today comes from John chapter 14 as we continue in this chapter. Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him. For he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me. 
Because I live, you also will live. In that day you will know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, for I will love him and manifest myself to him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with our next hymn together, Children of the Heavenly Father. Children of the Heavenly Father, safely in His bosom gather, nestling bird nor star in heaven, such a refuge e'er was given. God His own doth tend and nourish, in His holy courts they flourish, from all he bears them. Neither life nor death shall ever from the Lord his children sever. Unto them his grace he showeth, and their sorrows all he knoweth. Though he giveth or he taketh, God his children forsaketh is the loving purpose solely to preserve them pure and holy may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts gathered here today be acceptable in your sight O Lord our rock and our redeemer Amen Today we hear those continuing words of Jesus in John chapter 14. Last week we heard how he goes to prepare a place for us. Today he talks about sending the Holy Spirit. But today as we continue on in this uh, kind of pause right now, as some parts of the country are opening up, some parts of the world are opening up, other parts are not, all the questions that are there. Are you feeling tired? Are you feeling anxious? Are you feeling frustrated and fatigued? I know I'm feeling all of those things. Wondering what each day holds, and that in itself creates an anxiety and a pressure on us. Not that we don't do the things that we normally do, but there's just that underlying, almost like a a buzz and a weight that's there. And it kind of is hard to deal with sometimes. We talk about sometimes being stir-crazy when it comes to this, that we want to get things back to normal whatever normal is going to be. And really what we often feel in a lot of this is we feel alone. We feel alone because it seems like we're separated from many other people. Yeah, we're with our families and some people that we know, but it still feels alone. It's not like we're in control of who we can see and what we can do. And so that aloneness is hard sometimes to deal with. And sometimes I think we even feel alone when it comes to God because God doesn't answer us in a way that we often want. 
in a way that, you know, like he's right in front of us, sending a sign to us or telling us something or talking to us in a way that we would perceive would be the way that would be good for us. I'm sure the disciples were feeling the same thing, feeling alone, feeling isolated, wondering, are they the only ones that believe in Jesus at this point? And was it really a foolish thing to even do that? But Jesus, knowing their hearts, knowing the trouble that they were facing, continues then to teach them and remind them of what is going to happen in the future with them. He reminds them that the Holy Spirit is going to come upon them. Yes, he is going to disappear in the sense of being present with them in that physical presence of being that man who walked the earth. But he is never leaving them. He's sending the Holy Spirit. In fact, he even says, this is how it has to work. This is the plan that's unfolding. That Jesus comes, dies, rises again, and goes to the right hand of the Father so that then the Holy Spirit can come and be a part of your lives. In a couple weeks here, we're going to celebrate Pentecost. And Pentecost is that celebration where that Holy Spirit does come out to the church. We see that fantastic event of the tongues of fire that rest on the disciples and the speaking of the different languages and the many, many that were baptized. But Jesus here in John chapter 14 is talking about how this plan is going to unfold. But the other thing he does is not only talking about the Holy Spirit coming, and I like the term that he uses there, a helper. Sometimes we also hear the comforter idea that the Holy Spirit will be there to comfort them. But he also talks about, he says, I will not leave you as orphans. He spoke right to the heart of what they were feeling at that moment. That if Jesus is leaving them like he talks about, what are they going to do? They're going to feel like orphans. And he says, I will not leave you like orphans. And so then what we have here is Jesus reminding his disciples how God is always truly with us. Then we hear the story in Acts, the familiar story of Paul preaching to the Areopagus. And he talks about this unknown God, one of their idols that they had seen there, and how he then lays out the story of who God is and what he has done for us. But one of the things that is said in there is that he said he remembers hearing one of their poets saying that in God is in whom we live, move, and have our being, and every breath comes from that image of God that we're made in the image of God. And so a reminder there through Paul that the God who made the universe, who made each and every one of us, is also there with us. It will always be there with us. He talks about that, you know, kind of crawling to God. In some ways, I think he's just talking about how the world wants to do that. But then he says, God is never far away. He is always right there with us. And we have the promise, as in 1 Peter, that in baptism, Christ has taken up residence in us, in our hearts, in our minds. His word that continues to speak to us. Yes, not with those audible words in the sense of him right there in front of us, but his words nonetheless. God is speaking to us. And in our baptism, we become his children, children of the Heavenly Father, and that we are safe with him no matter what we face. So God reminds the disciples that, yes, when he's leaving, he's not really leaving them. And Paul reminds them that God is not far but near to us. And that in 1 Peter, our baptism connects us to God in Christ Jesus. So right now, we are really practicing church at home. Church at home. I mean, watching it on TV, spending time, you know, in God's Word, as much as we can carve out with that in this crazy time. How often we think, oh, we should be doing more in that. But yet, we are practicing church at home. And maybe that's a good thing for us to be reminded that the church really isn't a building. Now, I'm not saying how important it is. I think we realize how important it is to gather together when we're not together. But it's a reminder that we are still the church. Just because we're not together in one place doesn't mean we don't continue to function because God continues 
to function in us. He continues to work in us. He is not far from us. He is always there for us. And as frustrating as it is at times, we are the body of Christ. We are the church. He is there for us. And so I like this image too, maybe thinking about the church in this sense. Of all our homes everywhere, spread out throughout our community, throughout our state, country, and world, we all are proclaiming Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. So whether we do it in our place of worship or whether we do it in our homes, we are the church. We are the body of Christ. And how wonderful it is that, yes, when we feel tired and alone and anxious and wonder why this is dragging on so long, we can know and trust that God is with us. It's not by our strength and might, but by his It's not by what we have done, but what he has done for us. And so to be reminded of that over and over again is so important. That Jesus does not leave us as orphans, even though we feel like that right now. He is always there for us. He sends his Holy Spirit into our hearts and minds. In whom we have our very life, as Paul reminds us, is the God who is not far from us. He is near to us. And in our baptism and in God's word, he strengthens us and renews us and reminds us that we are his children. So if you're feeling alone, if you're feeling overwhelmed, if you're feeling tired, anxious, frustrated, turn to Jesus and allow him to grant healing to you. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for the opportunity to worship you in spirit and in truth in our homes and throughout the world to know that we are truly the body of Christ and that you love us. You do not leave us alone. You are not far from us. Strengthen us this day and remind us always that we are your people. So excited for the day when we can meet together again, but also knowing that you have never left us and never have forsaken us. In Jesus' name, amen. We continue with our offerings. Again, our offerings are a reminder that God truly blesses us with so many gifts uh, through our resources, through our talents, all those different things, but that he invites us then as true believers to, to give back to God, to give so that the kingdom can continue to grow. Just as we give and support our families, we also give and support the church and the body of Christ. We thank you for the gifts that have been given and the gifts that we offer to our Lord now. We continue now with the prayer of God's people. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are in need of your healing touch and need of your comfort. We pray specifically this week for uh, Zena, a student here at St. John who has been hospitalized with a non-COVID illness, but an illness nonetheless, and we pray that you would grant healing to her. We pray for um, Pastor uh, Keith uh, Knup, pastor at St. Mark's Lutheran Church, and his family at the death of his father this last week. Comfort them as they mourn his loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for those who are on our prayer list, for Carrie and for Ron, for Joanne and for Pat, for Frank, for Janet, for Rosemary, for Anita, for Don, for Marty, for Bev, for Elena, for Tom, for Carol, for Gertrude, for Claudette, for Chris, for Camille, for Della, for Gail, and for Jim. Lord, for these individuals, we pray that you would come into their situations, grant healing according to your will, but comfort to remind them that you are always with them. You are not far, but you are there to give them that comfort in their time of need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray and continue to pray for those who are in authority over us, both in our community, in our state, in our nation, and in our world. 
As tough decisions need to be made in the days ahead, we pray that you would give wisdom and guidance. Give patience to us as citizens as well to understand that these things may be new and patience to know that ultimately we seek the good of all people. Help us, Lord, in times that we are are wrong or make mistakes to recognize those, but also then to turn to you for wisdom and strength and for forgiveness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, too, for those who continue to work, those who continue to work to provide for those who are in need and provide for our daily lives. We pray for those who... Um, are dealing with difficult times right now, the health care workers, the police, the fire department, and others who in these uncertain times need, have stepped up. And we pray that you would continue to watch over them and to, to comfort them and keep them safe. We pray for our teachers who continue to teach in, in a unique way in distance learning. Lord, we know how frustrating it can be, but also how creative it can be. We pray that you would give patience and and comfort in the days ahead for our teachers and also for our students, that they would continue in that learning process to not give up, but to continue to, to grow and to learn and to be nurtured through the educational process. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who truly have been affected by uh, this uh, COVID illness, who have been ill themselves or have had loved ones who have been ill or even those who have lost loved ones to this illness. Comfort them in this, this pandemic time. Remind them always of your presence with them. Surround them with your people who can speak that word of truth to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for our ministry here at St. John both in this physical place of St. John, where church and school come together, but also in our community, where our church truly resides, in our homes and in our workplaces and wherever we go. Help us to continue to be your people and be reminded that you are not far from us, but always with us. Thank you, Lord, for the ministry that continues, day after day, week after week, year after year, because of your goodness and grace and mercy to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all these and other prayer requests that are in our hearts and minds, we lift before you, Lord, knowing and trusting that your good and gracious will be done. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Our Father, who art art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, thy thy will be done, on earth as as it is in heaven. heaven. Give Give us this this day day our daily bread, and and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive forgive those who trespass trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. A few announcements as uh, we, uh, before we do our final song together. Again, a reminder that we stay uh, connected with each other, that we uh, stay connected through um, telephone, through um, our email, through on our webpage as well. Reminder too that news will continue to come out through our email, on our website, and uh, periodic um, mailings as well. We thank you, too, for the offerings and donations that continue to come in. Mailing it is, a, is an easy and wonderful way to do that, but we also have the online ability, too, to uh, um, do either ongoing or one-time type of gifts. Then also we have the, um, our reopen survey. Many of you, I think we were already up to about 60 responses to that word. Thank you for that. We pray that um, it, this would be an opportunity for you to, t- uh, to share with us in the things that um, we are... Um, learning about and wondering about, just to kind of give you, um, this is not set in stone anywhere, but we're looking at kind of the middle of June as our time where we are going to uh, reopen for worship. I know it seems like a long ways away, but I'm already looking at it going, Ugh, we got a, not a whole lot of time before we can be together, but, but we're excited for our committee that's really working hard on this, and uh, just uh, be patient. Uh, we will get to that point where we will open up and be able to worship again. 
So let's uh, continue then by singing together Amazing Grace. <laughs> 